Hi, I'm Andy Powers. We're going to talk about the pitch that nobody seems to really understand completely, and that's the curveball. How to throw it and also when to throw it, too, in terms of the age group. So I'll see you in a second. All right, so we're going to talk about the curveball in this video, and this is a pitch that, uh, you know, if you can throw a very good curveball, I, th I still think it's one of the more difficult pitches to hit uh, in the game, and I think a lot of hitters would tell you this, that as well. The key is, is the ability to throw it properly, and I know there's a whole lot of opinions out there. I know there's a whole lot of uh, ideas on how to do it, as well as, you know, when you should do it, the age group to do it, and everything else. And I, to an extent, I, I can understand and agree with, with some of it. Uh, the one thing I will tell you is that the one thing we don't want to do when we're throwing the curveball, which is a lot of the ways that's still being taught, unfortunately, today, as well as, you know, the things that uh, guys did a long time ago, is that as you're throwing it on the release, you are, you know, aggressively kind of supinating, if you will, turning the hand in as you're letting go of the baseball. Stay away from that. If somebody's telling you to do that, run away as fast as you can and find somebody else to help you with this. But if we're not teaching that manner, actually some statistic, you know, some, some, some research will show that a properly thrown curveball is not necessarily any more taxing or dangerous on the elbow and the arm than a fastball or any other pitch. Okay, so does that mean that anybody can throw it? No, not necessarily in the sense of this. What I've found also is that a lot of guys have no idea how to throw this pitch effectively to, to reduce as much load and stress on the elbow and arm as you can, and therefore they're still putting themselves at risk. Because one thing I want you to understand is that no matter what pitch you throw, the natural progression of the body once the ball has left your hand is to pronate in. The thumb goes down to the ground. You can't necessarily feel it do it, but I promise you if you're doing, if you're having an effectively, uh, effective deceleration mode right after you let go of the baseball, your arm is doing it. So the last thing that we want to have is an aggressive move to supination to an aggressive move to pronation because you're not going to quite get to pronation and that's when you're going to start blowing up your elbow. So what about the age groups? Well, here's, here's, what I, here's what I always say about that. I don't believe that a kid in Little League, 8, 10, 12 years old, should be throwing a curveball. Okay? I know that you see in the Little League World Series all the time guys throwing a curveball on TV because hitters aren't used to seeing it. So they get guys out, and the name of the game is to win the game. But what are we sacrificing potentially on their development? I don't know, but the, the time will tell. They need to be throwing fastballs and change-ups at that level, okay? I still say in, in another video that I've made on the change-up is that the change-up's the most devastating pitch in the game. Guys that can command a good, good change-up, they, they are just filthy, filthy guys. Hitters don't want to face that guy, I promise you. But that doesn't mean that an 8, 10-year-old, and 12 year old is not going to throw the curveball because they're going to learn about it. They're going to hear about it. And the thing about it is, is that throwing a change-up is not that sexy to a 10 or 12-year-old. Okay, I get it. They want to be able to throw a pitch and they want to see it move because that's fun. So if they're going to do it, might as well show them the way to do it without putting themselves in significant uh, risk. Okay, and that's what I hope to do with the next part of this uh, video here. So the way we hold the curveball, there's a lot of different ways, but most ways, the most common way is guys throw it where they got the big horseshoe. They take their two fingers and they put their middle finger on the inside part of that seam. Uh, and then they lay the other finger down. Some guys like to do what they call the spike curveball. Uh, you know, it's, it's personal preference to an extent, but for the most part, this is the, the standard uh, operating uh, grip for the, uh, the, the curveball. And that when they throw it, to throw a really true, what they call 12-6 curveball, one that comes here and then goes straight down, you want to be able to let go of the ball so that as soon as it leaves your hand, it's rotating over its top, but it's like a reverse four seam, if you will, that it's going right over its top and eventually it's going to be put down. So how do we do that? It's a very simple move, but it takes practice. If you're sitting there as a pitcher, and I'm gonna, if I was throwing this way, when the guy comes out of their glove, they're going to probably be somewhere with their fingers on top of the ball or they may be slightly in. Hopefully they're not back this way, but they're going to be right in here and then they're going to start moving 
the arm forward. It's at that point right before you start moving the arm forward that you want to make this little bit of a move. And all you're going to do is you're going to come out and then right before you move, you're just going to make a little turn, okay, with that. And it happens real quick and that's why it takes some practice. But if you can get into this, uh, this uh, position, then as you come forward, you're already in the position that you need to be in as you're coming through the pitch. So there's no twisting, there's no late aggressive actions on the elbow. You're already in position. You're already able to externally rotate back, lay that shoulder back, and then you come forward. You might equate it to kind of like throwing a football. It's however it makes sense to you. But the key is, is that right as you're coming out, you're just going to make this quick little turn. Okay, so right there, and then you come forward and throw. As soon as you throw, then your hand is a lot safer and easier to go into pronation mode from there. The key to a curveball too is that when you're throwing it, the way to throw it and develop it is what I call uh, an extended breaking ball. So I'm going to say in the uh, at the high school level, just to, for instance, so we're at 90 foot bases. Guy goes out on a daily basis, he goes to his long toss. As he's working himself back in, when he gets to about 75 feet away from his partner, what we do is it's called extended breaking balls. And what you'll do is you do a shuffle step and you sit there and you throw breaking balls to your partner. Now the ability to throw a good curve ball or slider or whatever from your, to your partner from 75 feet away, the only way you can do that is to keep the arm moving quick and to get it out front. The other piece to this is that when it leaves the hand, we want it to come out of the hand flat like a fastball and go down. We're not looking for two plane, you know, one that goes up and then it goes down. We're not looking for that pitch, okay? If you're, make, if, if you're throwing your curveball and you see that pitch where it comes up and then it goes down, what that's telling you is that you're letting go of this pitch as your hand is still coming forward into a launch position instead of at, at a release point out in front of you where you're moving more here and down. Guys that can throw the curveball that's flat and then goes down, really tough on hitters, okay? Now, the last piece. When should guys start to maybe start playing with this? Uh, that's a very individual uh, question. I will tell you that around the age of about 14 years old, okay, and this is coming from orthopedic surgeons that I've spoken with, that around the age of 14 or so is when growth plates start to fuse together. If you incur damage in any of those areas where there's some growth plates in your elbows and your shoulders, uh, especially from you know hard twisting actions, you can create permanent damage once those growth plates start to, to fuse. So around the, about the age of 14, so that's gonna be around everybody's about freshman year. But everybody is different. I've seen kids that grow up real fast and you know, and they've peaked at 13 in terms of growth and they're that way the rest of their lives. I've also seen some kids that are a junior in high school with the skeletal structure of a 12 year old and then they start to hit their peak. It, it, everybody's different, okay? But the key is, is that if they're going to throw it, teach them how to throw it properly. And that's how we want to throw it properly, is just making that little turn right before you come forward, and that way you're already in position all the way through on the throw, okay? Hope that helps. Hey, before you leave, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check out some of the other videos I got on my page. Check out the website. I look forward to seeing you again. Thanks, take care, see you in the next one.